On December 6, Russian Air Force One flew from Russia to the United Arab Emirates accompanied by a formation of Su-35S fighter jets. And many factors unique to the world converged in this event. We will even omit the uniqueness of having armed fighter jets flying in the airspace of three countries, which is a world achievement in itself. The Su-35S is the pinnacle, the final stage of the modernization potential of the old Su-27, whose operation began in 1985. The Su-27 airframe was used to maximize its capabilities, creating a unique fighter that cannot be attributed to the fourth generation, but also to the fifth. Often Western experts compare the Su-35S with the F-22, for it is the only one that, according to them, has a chance to stand up to the Russian fighter. But, as some experts write, the only thing in which the F-22 is significantly superior to the Su-35S is in stealth. Nevertheless, the Su-35C is indeed a unique fighter, for its ancestor, the Su-27, is in many ways superior in its aerodynamic characteristics to the American F-14, F-15 and F-22. The Su-27 demonstrations at Le Berg in 1989 only confirmed the fears of Western specialists. British Air Force pilot John Farlight said at the time Viktor Pugachev, a Su-27 pilot, made a 360-degree turn in 10 seconds. The average speed on the turn was 36 degrees per second. And back then we only hoped that our next generation fighter could reach 25 degrees per second. This is the speed at which the pilot is able to deploy the airplane so that the entire weapons suite is ready to attack. To further increase the maneuverability of the new Su-27 modification, it began to be equipped with a front plumage and later with an engine with a deflectible thrust vector. The Su-35C's progenitor was the experimental Su-37, popularly nicknamed, Terminator. The fighter's capabilities impressed many. The Americans, for example, showed its maneuver in a program on the Discovery Channel about the development and creation of the F-22, dubbing the Su-37 the Lord of the Sky. In fact, this is how the whole world learned what the Su-27 airframe is capable of when equipped with an engine with a deflected thrust vector. In 2002, the Su-37 crashed during regular tests, so the program was decided not to extend, and many of the developments were directed to the Su-35 project, which was created using technology from the fifth-generation fighter POC FA, today's Su-57. The first flight of the Su-35S prototype took place on February 19, 2008. The airplane was equipped with new AL-41F1S engines with all-round controlled thrust vectoring. More powerful engines capable of developing a thrust of 14,500 kg force, which is 2,000 kg force more than previous models, allowed the Su-37 to retain maneuverability without the use of a front plumage, which in turn allowed to achieve a reduction in radar visibility by up to 10 times. The fighter jet entered service in 2014. At the moment, Russia already has 100 Su-35S in service. China was interested in this fighter, especially its engine and radar. The fact is that during tests in China, the Su-35S radar detected a low observable cruise missile with an EPR of 0.01 square meters at a distance of 130 kilometers. This record is still unbroken by anyone. Only ABAX aircraft, specially designed long-range radar detection aircraft like the Russian A-50 or A-100 in the US Boeing E-3 Sentry or Boeing E-767, can detect such low observable targets at this range. China has since purchased 22 Su-35S fighters. The Su-35S inherited a solid range from its predecessor. It is capable of flying without refueling and outboard fuel tanks for almost 3,600 kilometers with a full ammunition on board. Such range parameters are unavailable to any other heavy fighter, except for the use of suspended fuel tanks. You may ask a fair question, why do we need fourth-generation fighters, even modernized ones, if there is already a fifth generation? Answer. The fifth-generation fighter does not yet have as significant an advantage over the deeply modernized fourth-generation fighters as previously envisioned. One of their advantages is low visibility, which effectively counteracts radars, the principle of which is based on the Doppler effect. Even low observable fighters are detected by modern fourth-generation aircraft equipped with phased array radars at a distance of 130 kilometers. Often the arsenal doesn't even have missiles capable of shooting down a target at that range. As demonstrated by the 2018 encounter between the Su-35S and F-22 over Alaska, the Su-35S detected stealth at a distance of nearly 200 km and reliably acquired a target at a distance of 150 km. After this incident, the US, even before all the known events, began threatening to impose sanctions on all states that would purchase Su-35S. For example, Indonesia, which had signed a contract to purchase 11 Su-35S, was forced to cancel the procurement under US pressure. Egypt also wanted to buy 24 Su-35S fighter jets, 
but the US invited it by imposing an economic blockade. Malaysia and India were interested in acquiring the Su-35, but the US hustled it up. As a result, the Su-35S is officially in service only in Russia and China. Despite all this, as recent practice shows, there is increased interest in the modernized fourth-generation aircraft. And no wonder, because the same Su-35S is able to go supersonic without using afterburner and launch missiles at supersonic speed. And this previously could only be done by fifth-generation fighters such as the F-22 and Su-57. The Su-35S clearly showed the potential for modernization of seemingly already old-school aircraft. For the Americans, this provided the impetus to undertake a similar modernization of their fourth-generation fighters. They have curtailed their F-22 procurement program and suspended mass production of the F-35. The US is back to buying the old boys of the modernized version of the F-15, dubbed the F-15X Eagle II. This aircraft first took to the air on February 2, 2021. Meanwhile, in 2023, Congress was discussing the decommissioning of 33 F-22 Raptor fighters, the first production run. It was stated that these fighters were no longer combat capable and were useless to the US Air Force as they were costly to maintain. So it's too early to write off fourth-generation fighter accounts. Even China, which has already produced 150 of its fifth-generation G-20 fighters, is not in a hurry to replace them with G-10 and G-16 fighters, but on the contrary is increasing their production. Moreover, the dynamics of growth in the production of fourth-generation fighters significantly exceeds the production of fifth-generation fighters. But Americans wouldn't be Americans if they hadn't defeated the Russians they hated, true only in the movies. Thank goodness there's a Hollywood that makes it possible to shoot down Russian Terminators in aerial combat. I'm talking about the 2005 movie Stealth, which shows how the real-life Su-37s engaged in combat with the Americans' computer-generated fictional sixth-generation hypersonic fighter F-A-37. The pilot of this fictional marvel of technology and his partner, a super-advanced artificial intelligence, bravely dealt with the Sushkas, though not without excesses. The episode was criticized and received negative comments even in the US itself. So in the next such movie, the 2022 Top Gun Maverick, Tom Cruise flies two Su-57s at once in a long decommissioned and decommissioned F-14. That's the American way of revenge. In the meantime, we'll return to reality, where Americans don't seem to be getting any of that. The Su-35S, which accompanied our president on his way to the sheikhs, clearly interested both the United Arab Emirates and Saudi Arabia. Most likely, their military personnel were similarly demonstrated these combat fighters and their weapons complex at a meeting closed from publication to the press. Let's see if any contracts with these countries come up. However, it is unlikely that even fighters such as the Su-35S or F-15X Eagle II will meet the demands of the times beyond 2035. For the development of air defense and unmanned strike technologies, as well as the active development of sixth-generation fighters and new quantum radars, all of which will leave no chance for fourth-generation fighters to gain air superiority, no matter how they are modernized. And about quantum radar, it's not bullshit, this is a technology called radiophotonic radar, ROFAR, which is being actively developed today in Russia, the United States, China and France. ROFAR is being developed not for the Su-57, as is commonly thought, but for the POC DA and 6th generation fighters, which will be in the basic version completely unmanned and only optionally manned. There is talk that there are the first prototypes of such technologies, but this is not certain. The US, for example, recognized even before the purchase of the F-15X Eagle II that it would be less effective after 2028 in the face of the increasing proliferation of SAM systems such as the S-400. But today, its procurement makes more sense for the US Air Force than the same F-35. Yes, US sanctions were immediately imposed against Turkey after daring to buy S-400 complexes from Russia. I'll bet you do. Based on all of the above, we can safely state that today's fifth-generation fighters cannot yet fully replace the S-400. Of time-tested fourth-generation old-timers. It is likely that fighters such as the Su-35S, F-15EX, JAS-39EF and Rafale will remain in service until the sixth generation arrives. Therefore, it is no wonder why it was the Su-35S that escorted flight number one.